In this video, I'm gonna show you five steps that you can take right now to improve your online privacy and reduce the amount of personal data that you're leaking out to for-profit companies that then sell your data or expose it in data breaches for cyber criminals to exploit. And you may be saying, but Chris, I've got nothing to hide. Who cares if Google or Facebook knows what kind of car I drive or where I work or where I like to eat dinner? Well, even if you think you have nothing to hide, your data can still get leaked out to the wrong people. Malicious actors can use your personal information to commit identity theft or financial fraud or other crimes. Your data can be used by companies to target you with personalized ads or to make decisions that affect your life, such as denying you a loan or a job. It's not about having something to hide, it's about mitigating the damages that can come from spilling all of your personal data all over the internet, which is why this video will show you some easy changes that you can make today that will help you disappear online. Did you know that Crosstalk Solutions has its own community Discord server full of tech enthusiasts just like you, who love chatting with other like-minded folks, helping each other out by answering questions and troubleshooting issues. There's even a buy, sell, trade section for your used computer equipment and networking gear. And if you're a Crosstalk Discord booster, you get access to your own private chat room with myself as well as the other Discord boosters. So come on in and join the discussion at discord.gg slash crosstalk. Solutions. And if you're not interested in our Discord, you should at least take a moment to like this video and subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions for more helpful videos just like this one. It's absolutely one of the best ways you can show your support for the work that we've done here, and best of all, it's absolutely free. Before we start to beef up your privacy, let's sidetrack for a moment to talk about privacy versus security. These are two separate topics. Privacy deals with how much of your personal information is spread online and how to protect or hide that data. Security deals more with keeping your account secure. Two-factor authentication, strong unique passwords, and password managers are all excellent ways to increase online security, and they should absolutely go hand in hand with good privacy practices. But that's a different topic for a different video. Let me know if you want me to do a similar video on best practice online security down in the comments below. Okay, now onto my top five privacy tips. This video summarizes all of these tips, but for a deeper dive into each section, I've also created a blog post that you can find on crosstalksolutions.com slash blog. So if you want more info, as well as links to everything that I'm talking about here, Click the link in the description and you can go straight to the source. The first and probably easiest thing that you can do to increase your online privacy dramatically is to switch to a privacy focused internet browser. There's a great reference chart on privacytest.org that shows you which browsers are best at blocking third party ads and trackers, cross site scripting, and have the ability to randomize browser fingerprinting. What is browser fingerprinting? Well, basically, when you visit a website, they can see all sorts of semi-identifiable information about you, such as your screen resolution, your operating system version, your computer hardware details. All of this information combined creates a unique fingerprint that can then be used to track you as you move from site to site. Randomizing browser fingerprinting means that your unique fingerprint now changes for every site that you visit, making you harder to track. Good privacy focused browsers are also gonna block ads by default, which makes surfing the web so much faster, it also conserves some internet bandwidth. Brave, for example, tells you how many ads it's blocked as well as how much bandwidth and time has been saved every time you open up a new browser tab. Two browsers that get very high scores when it comes to privacy are Brave and Firefox. Brave in particular was designed specifically for privacy, and since it's built on the same Chromium engine as Google Chrome, it's essentially a drop-in replacement for Chrome users. All of the same add-on extensions that work in Chrome also work in Brave. Now to me, if you're a Chrome user, this is a no-brainer. I use Brave myself and I have found very little difference in my browsing experience, but I know that the Brave browser is on my side when it comes to leaking my personal information. You definitely can't say the same thing about Google Chrome. Now, Mozilla Firefox has similar high marks when it comes to privacy, but it isn't exactly a one-to-one -one replacement for Google Chrome because it's built on its own engine and it has its own separate list of add-on extensions and features. But when it comes right down to it, you really can't go wrong privacy-wise with either Brave or Firefox. Now, Brave and Firefox both have mobile device versions as well, but since we're talking about mobile browsers, 
I also have to mention DuckDuckGo, which is another privacy-focused mobile browser that I personally use by default on my iPhone. Now, I also have Brave installed, but I actually prefer DuckDuckGo on mobile. It's got some killer animations for clearing all tabs and data, which is always super fun to do. It also has a great feature for those cookie pop-ups that are all over the internet these days. With the Manage Cookie Pop-Ups feature, DuckDuckGo will try to automatically set preferences to necessary cookies only, and then submit that selection so that you never have to see those pop-ups again. If you're stuck using Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge because your employer requires it or because you just prefer those browsers, there are still some things that you can do to increase privacy through add-on extensions. One of the best add-ons for blocking ads and trackers is EFF's Privacy Badger, which learns what to block algorithmically rather than blocking, you know, just like a human curated list of domains. Or in other words, since ad domains are constantly changing, Privacy Badger is primarily a tracker blocker. It also specifically doesn't actually block ads that aren't tracking you because they're trying to find a way to incentivize advertisers to adopt better overall privacy practices in the ads that they're serving. Some of the other traditional ad blocking extensions worth mentioning are Adblock Plus, Adblock, and Ublock Origin. These all do an excellent job of blocking ads and have many options for customizing block lists as well as adding exceptions for domains that you don't want to block. Now going back a few years, there was another must-have add-on extension called HTTPS Everywhere. This was also from EFF, the same people that make Privacy Badger. The purpose of HTTPS Everywhere was to rewrite all of the links that you browse to as secure HTTPS links rather than unencrypted standard HTTP links. And if an HTTPS version doesn't exist, then HTTPS Everywhere would warn you about it. This, however, is no longer a must-have add-on because requiring HTTPS is now built in to every major browser, which is absolutely great. In Brave or Chrome, you can go to Settings, Privacy and Security, and then Security, and you want to enable Always Use Secure Connections. You can do the same thing in Firefox and Microsoft Edge, uh, and you can check out my blog post for full instructions on how to do so. Let's also mention private browsing or private windows in your browser. All browsers have this functionality, but it's not really private per se. Using a private window simply means that anything you search for or any website that you surf to isn't cached and your search history isn't saved. But if you open a private window and then you log into Google to check your email or log into Facebook to you know, stalk your ex-girlfriend and her new boyfriend, Thad, I sure hope they're happy, Google and Facebook are still going to know who you are and what you're doing. You just won't have that history saved in your local browser cache. So private windows aren't really private or anonymous, but what about Tor? Now Tor stands for the Onion Router, and it's essentially a network infrastructure for anonymous web surfing that goes really far into masking your identity. Tor does have a notorious reputation as a conduit into the dark web for people who are looking to buy drugs or order hookers, right? But really it's just a way to keep super private on the web, no matter what you happen to be surfing for. When you use Tor, you're creating a zigzag connection through three publicly available nodes somewhere out in the world before you get to your destination. Each of the three nodes that you surf through only knows about its direct neighbors, where the traffic came from and where it's going. There's nothing linking you as the source with the destination website you're trying to get to. Now I could do a full video just on Tor, how it works and how to use it, but that's more than I'm gonna get into here. Just know that when you're using Tor, you're much more anonymous, but it's also way, way slower. There's a huge performance hit when routing through the public Tor nodes. Tor has their own Tor browser, which connects you through Tor nodes automatically every time you surf the web, but the Brave browser, my preferred browser, has a private window with Tor feature that actually works pretty well. And while it anonymizes you much more than surfing to websites directly, it's just using Brave's features through the Tor nodes. So even Brave themselves pop up a warning that says, you know, if your actual personal safety depends on remaining anonymous, then you should use the Tor browser instead of Brave. The second easiest way to increase your online privacy is to use a privacy-focused search engine when you're searching things out on the internet. 
The big name search engines like Google and Bing, these they make their money off your data by serving you ads. The more targeted the ads they can throw at you, the better return for the advertisers who purchase the ads, right? So it benefits these companies to know as much about you as possible. Privacy focused search engines don't associate what you search for with any of your personally identifiable information. Now, every major browser has the ability to set what default search engine you get you use when you're searching for something via the browser bar. Brave by default has their own Brave search, but they allow you to pick from a list of alternatives as well. Another good privacy focused search engine is DuckDuckGo, the same folks that make that mobile web browser that I use on my phone. If you're a Google Chrome user, you can go to settings search engine to change the default. DuckDuckGo is actually one of the few default search engines that you can choose right out of the box, but you can also add others such as Brave search. And again, full instructions for how to do this are over in the blog post. My next tip is to ensure that you have enabled DNS over HTTPS, or DOLT for short. Now, DNS is how your browser makes its way around the internet. DNS converts human-friendly names into computer-friendly IP addresses. So when you need to get to like crosstalksolutions.com, your computer queries its own DNS servers first, which then query external DNS servers until you're delivered the IP address of the website that you're trying to get to. When you make a DNS query by default, that's unencrypted. So even if all data that's coming to and from a particular website is encrypted with HTTPS, the actual DNS query for that site might be visible to anyone who's listening into your network traffic. DNS over HTTPS is exactly what it sounds like. You're telling your computer to resolve DNS queries over an encrypted connection so that those queries can't be seen. All modern browsers support DOH, but it's usually not enabled by default. In Brave or Google Chrome, for example, you have to go to Settings, Privacy and Security, Security, and then you want to enable the Use Secure DNS feature. From here, you can pick one of the pre-existing DOH providers on the list, and again, full instructions for enabling DNS over HTTPS for all of the major browsers are in the blog post. My fourth tip for remaining private on the internet is to use a VPN. And hell no, this is not a sponsored ad for NordVPN because as I've said before, and I gotta tell you, NordVPN sucks. Now you can go and watch that video for my full experience with NordVPN courting me as a content creator. But while I'm not a huge fan of NordVPN, I do feel that subscribing to a VPN proxy service is a must have step towards protecting your privacy online. All of these VPN providers work basically the same in that you initiate a secure encrypted connection from your devices out to their servers, which are usually you know, geographically spread out all over the world. This gives you a number of advantages, including masking your actual WAN IP and location from the sites that you visit. Plus, you can use VPNs to get around some of these geographical restrictions that may be present in your country. People have found, for instance, that appearing to come from a different country gives you different videos to watch on your favorite streaming service or even different pricing for airline tickets. Many sites and services have gotten wise to the use of VPN services. Hulu and Disney Plus and Netflix, they will now all block you from logging in if they see you coming from a known VPN IP address. My Tesla app won't connect to my car if my VPN is on and can also screw with captive portal logins, such as when you're trying to connect to the Wi-Fi at a hotel. So in these cases, usually you just have to turn off the VPN service until you've connected and then you can re-enable it. And knowing when your VPN connection is causing issues with your internet activities is just kind of like the learning curve that you have to go through when you're using a VPN proxy service. So then who do I personally like and who do I recommend? Well, this is gonna be controversial because personally, I still use private internet access and I've had no issues with them whatsoever. Now, why is that controversial? Well, private internet access, ExpressVPN and CyberGhost, these are among a handful of VPN service providers who were purchased by Cape Technologies a few years back. And Cape Technologies is a known adware and malware company. And if you can't trust the owner of your VPN service, you're gonna have a real tough time trusting the VPN service itself. Now I go into this in much greater detail in the blog post, but the bottom line is that once the Cape acquisition of private internet access happened, I made the decision to keep using them personally 
but I stopped promoting them on YouTube. I think I've only made like one video about private internet access in the past few years. Now I will say that in those past few years, I haven't noticed a difference in the service, uh, and the interface for private internet access on both desktop and mobile has improved significantly. They do still have a strict no logging policy. They've got a robust feature set. It's super easy to use. And I'm a lazy tech guy, right? Who doesn't want to go through the hassle of switching to a different provider. So until something changes, private internet access works great for me. But beyond them, who's a trustworthy VPN provider? So two good options are Molvad and Proton. Now I'm not affiliated with either of those providers, but Molvad is considered to be one of the most secure and anonymous VPN services available today. They're based out of Sweden and they have an independently verified no logging policy, just like private internet access. They don't ask you for any personal information at all when you sign up, not even your email address. And they allow you to pay for their services in a number of different ways, including anonymously with Bitcoin and some other cryptocurrencies. Another popular choice is Proton VPN, who's a company that really prides themselves on privacy by default across all of their suite of products. Now their focus is making internet privacy accessible to everyone, and they even have a free version of Proton VPN. Though if you do have the means, I would highly recommend investing in one of their paid plans. For my fifth internet privacy tip, I am going to talk more about DNS and specifically using network-wide ad blocking. By network-wide, I mean the DNS servers that you're handing out to all of your various client and network devices with DHCP. On a smartphone or on a PC, you have the ability to set your DNS servers to whatever you want. But what about your streaming devices like your Roku, your smart television? What about those little IoT devices like your smart light bulbs and power switches? Those devices can phone home and reveal a lot of information about you and your network. So the DNS servers that you hand out to those devices can make a big difference. By simply configuring your DHCP servers to hand out privacy-focused DNS servers, such as Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1, the DNS lookups coming from your devices aren't logged or associated with your WAN IP address. But that's really not good enough because you're not blocking or filtering out bad domains that your devices may be connecting to. Cloudflare also offers 1.1.1.2, which filters out malware. And they have 1.1.1.3, which is their family filtering, which blocks both malware as well as adult content. Now there are other options out there as well, Quad9, for example, and Cisco's OpenDNS Family Shield are both similar free services that you can use to filter out content for your network. But there's one glaring issue with all of these services, and that's the fact that the content moderation and the filtering that's done is done by a big company without much in the way of options. I mean, with Cisco, you can do some customizable filtering, but still, you don't have a ton of control. A better option is to build your own network-wide ad and malware blocking DNS servers, such as Pi-hole or AdGuard Home. These are relatively easy projects to tackle, and they give you much more granular control over what's blocked, as well as the exceptions that you may want to add in manually. Now, I personally have two Pi-hole servers set up for my DNS queries. My main Pi-hole blocks over 50% of the DNS requests happening on my network. And by checking out the statistics, I can see that my Roku devices are the main offender. They phone home tens of thousands of times per day, all of which is blocked by my Pi-holes. When my devices make DNS requests, first, those requests are filtered out and potentially blocked by my Pi-hole servers. Then, if the lookup is already cached, that DNS request is answered locally without ever having to leave the network. If the DNS name is not cached, then it forwards that request out to an upstream DNS server for name resolution. And that upstream resolution can be configured to use DNS over HTTPS for that external request. It's a pretty nice setup. If you're interested in setting up a Pi-hole DNS server and an ad blocker on your own network, I did create a full step-by-step -step written guide as well as a video called The World's Greatest Pi-hole Tutorial, and you can find that in the link below. So let's summarize. If you really want to beef up your privacy, first, switch to a privacy-focused browser such as Brave or Firefox. Configure that browser with DNS over HTTPS and be sure to use a privacy-focused search engine. Get yourself signed up with and learn how to use a VPN proxy service. And finally, 
take some time to set up some network-wide ad blocking DNS servers. How much you dive into any of these individual topics is fully up to how comfortable you are with your own privacy. But let's talk about one bonus tip. It's what I like to call the nuclear option, and that is Tails Linux. When you absolutely have to have the highest level of privacy possible, Tails Linux allows you to boot any computer to a USB stick and run an operating system completely within the host system's RAM. Then when you shut down Tails Linux, it leaves no trace on the host computer whatsoever, and by default, it saves absolutely nothing about your internet session. Tails Linux has a ton of privacy-centric features and apps pre-installed, and can basically turn any computer into a temporary secure machine using the Tor browser by default. Now, while Tails Linux creates a secure and anonymous operating system session on any host computer, Keep in mind that it can still leak out data if you're using your ISP's DNS servers, or if you're logging into Facebook and Google, or if you're not connecting through a VPN proxy service, you still have to do the other privacy steps as well, but it's a really great tool to have in your tool belt. So those are my privacy tips for helping you disappear online in order to leave the lightest footprint possible when it comes to leaking out your personal information to big companies. But what did I miss? What other tips would you like to add to this list? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you'd like to keep this party going, be sure to check out these related videos on the right. The top video is my recent step-by-step -step guide to setting up Cloudflare tunnels, and the bottom video is the world's greatest pie hole tutorial.